And here we go. We're good. We're, we are live uh, on Friday Live with Friday Josh live. and Colin. Fourth s- Friday, fifth time? Fourth or fifth? Fourth? I don't know. Yeah, I think I fourth. Um, so, but uh, this has been lots of fun doing it. It has. It's been yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been great. And today was less crazy than last week. Last week was nuts. <laughs> last, last week, week was, was nuts. nuts. Yeah. Yes, that's um, right. Yeah, there um, was just like technical failures and after, it was busy oh, and know. a funeral and like, man. Yeah, it's yeah. true. And, uh, but I'm, we did, we did, I mentioned it last week. We did last Friday morning, we sat down and this, the episode's going to go live on Monday mm. evening, Monday night, 8.30 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Yeah. Um, the episode going live with Gilles Michaud. Did I good, say work, right? good work, yeah, good work, good work. I'm working yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And uh, talking about how, how, the role that we play in helping other people come into an awareness yeah. of the heart of God, the love of God. Um, and I love one of the things, and I'll just, I'll just throw this out for anybody listening uh, and is interested in this. Uh, one of the things Gilles said is the role of a spiritual director is to connect people back with the first experience they had with Jesus. Wow. Yeah. And I loved that. It was so mm. profound, that mm. thought. Just helping people re-engage with that first love yeah. experience and then deepening that first, not yeah. just to stay there, but to deepen it. Yeah. Um, and the Christian life, when it comes to life in God, it's not, it, it, it's not like we seek experience, mm-hmm. um, but it's definitely part of it. Yeah. Like when I'm walking in, I mean, I'm married and you're married when yep. you, you experience your wife and I experience yep. my wife yep. and, and it's right that we experience them in, mm-hmm. in all the different profound ways that they are. Course. And yeah. um, I didn't now I and and here one of the things I recognized and this is, has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about. One of the things I recognized when Erin and I first started dating was that I could uh, she was working and she didn't have a car. So I would go pick her up mm-hmm. and drop her off. And every I knew she liked coffee. So I'd go to Starbucks and get her a coffee and uh, and then pick her up. And so she'd have a coffee sitting there for her. And I realized within the first couple of weeks that I could bring this coffee to her because I wanted her to like me more. Right, of course. Or I could yeah. bring the coffee to her because I liked her. Right. And and I think as we mature in the spiritual life, mm-hmm. and this here's the segue into our topic, as we Good mature word. in the cereal, uh, cereal life, spiritual <laughs> life. Yeah. We do like cereal, but yeah. um, as we mature in the spiritual life, mm. there is a progression from... This isn't about what I'm getting out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is about how, how I've found something so worth dying for, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so worth pursuing, mm-hmm. so worth letting everything go, mm-hmm. that I can't help but conform my life to it, yeah. into the pursuit of it. Yeah. Um, and and that that is that's that is the true gospel, really. And I was watching um, a video where this guy, mm-hmm. kind of a classic. Um, prosperity type teacher was just saying we, he was he was realizing that the way that he had presented the gospel was he was presenting the gospel based on the side benefits of life in Christ and not based on the right. need to die right and find value in the one who's died for you yeah and yeah. he's he's been talking about the abundant life you can live but the problem is that takes effort and development mm-hmm and walking into it. And when you sell mm-hmm. people on that, they get disenchanted pretty quickly because it's not just an immediate. Yeah. And it seems like too, the, the abundant life is not, the abundance is not always the abundance we, we think it's going that's to be. That's very true. You yes. know, like it's like, um, yeah. Yeah. That that's may, very maybe, true. and that's, I guess that kind of leads us into today that maybe abundance isn't, uh, isn't exactly what, what we think it yeah. is. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. Yeah. Right. And, and that doesn't, that doesn't mean a Porsche necessarily. No, it doesn't mean yeah. a Porsche. It, 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 I don't have a problem with someone having a Porsche. No, 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 no. But, um, the, when, when, when the new, when the book of revelation defines the, the life of the, I love N.T. Wright stuff, right? Where he yeah. talks about the term eternal life should really be translated as the life of the age to come. Mm. Mm. And, and Jesus has come to make that accessible to us here now. Yes. The yeah. life of the age to come. The way the life of the age to come is defined in the book of Revelation is no more tears, no yeah. more pain, no more heartache, no more sorrow. Yeah. So the, the practice of the spiritual life, and, and as we're looking at Moses the Ethiopian mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. and because he's super practical when it comes to walking in neighborly love mm. 
um, or at least getting to neighborly default, <laughs> um, is that the practice of the spiritual life should be leading you in that direction. Right. It should be leading you to a place where there isn't pain, mm-hmm. where that not, and not that you're not going to experience pain, but where pain isn't the, the identifier of your life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, or no more tears, no more heartache. Yeah. And we one I love, um, I don't know if you've read any Francis Fenelon. No. Uh, Francis Fenelon. If anybody's out there that is watching, Francis Fenelon's fantastic. His mm. book, the, the Spiritual Letters, it just covers a wide range of topics. Francis Fenelon basically said, it's, I'm paraphrasing, it said something like this. Suffering is only suffering because of the pain that we add to it. Mm, right. Because of what we're holding on to. Right, of course. Yeah, right, right, right. Because right, right, as right. we're growing, we sh- there should be... Um, a willingness, like Jesus, a willingness to lay everything down mm-hmm. because you've seen something so beautiful, you can't help but right. you can't help but go after it. And so that's Jesus, the man to sure. the Father, right? Yeah, and it's got like James John vibes kind of thing, seashore. It does livelihood, you know? Yeah, like, it does. Yeah. yeah, it's it's painful because you haven't yet um, mm. you haven't yet fully embraced his life. Yeah, right. And because he looked at. He, he didn't look at his life as the pain that he experienced, or the suffering that he experienced, the heartache he experienced. He looked at it, but for the joy set before mm-hmm, him, mm-hmm. he suffered and endured the cross. Yeah. So he had a wildly different perspective. And, and that's what we see in um, the, some of the Desert Fathers is mm-hmm. this wildly different perspective, right? Mm-hmm. And so you came across an Instagram post. I did, yeah. We shared it to our Instagram. Yeah, shout, um, the, and that's a plug for the Instagram. Yeah, shout Follow out. the Silent Fire Instagram. I think it's actually just at Silent Fire at Podcast. Silent Fire Podcast. Um, but go. we shared it, and it's from this account. I'll, I'll give a shout out to the account because it's great, and it's the it's at Wisdom of the Fathers, and it's yes. they kind of do what we're trying to do and just post a lot of a lot of the wisdom from the desert and yeah. and uh, and the fathers and mothers. So um, this is. Uh, Moses the Ethiopian, Abba Moses, <clears throat> and this is the quote. Abba says, If we are on watch to see our own faults, we shall not see those of our neighbor. It is folly for a man who has a dead person in his house to leave him there and go to weep over his neighbor's dead. To die to one's neighbor is this, to bear your own faults and not to pay attention to anyone else, wondering whether they are good or bad. Do no harm to anyone. Do not think anything bad in your heart towards anyone. Do not scorn the man who does evil. Do not put confidence in him who does wrong to his neighbor. Do not rejoice with him who injures his neighbor. This is what dying to one's neighbor means. Wow. <laughs> no, you know, no, no, it's super easy stuff, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, in a way, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, true. In but a way. in a way, not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Well, it, the concept is simple. It's yeah. not, and that's, that's one of the things I love about the transferableness of the spiritual life. Mm, is it's not mm. difficult conceptually. Right. It's easy to grasp. Yeah. The, the gospel is not a difficult concept to grasp. Mm-hmm. Once you wrap your head around God became man, right? Now you get into the nuances of arguing that all out, right? But sure. that's different. We're talking about the simple ability to grasp the concept. God came and died so that you may be in relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, even when I say that, I'm going, oh, and can you say God died and <laughs> right, <laughs> all this, right. Dirt, right? But that's the, that's the argument going into some of the complex theological things. Yeah. The gospel and the spiritual life are simple. Um, they're just difficult to practice. Yeah, yeah. It's not simple. It's easy to grasp. And when, it's funny, when you read Paul and what Paul says about the spiritual life, it's like he, he doesn't call just leaders to this insane standard. Mm-hmm. And it's not insane, obviously. No, but... Um, he calls everybody. Titus yeah. 3, I think it is. When he lays out the principles of the spiritual life, he just says, this is how you should look. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, that's it's not it's not super difficult to say, love your neighbor. Yeah. Um, lay your life down. All yeah. these things, the concepts aren't hard. Yeah. It's how we practice them and why they become difficult because of what we hold on to. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's And that's a neat way to put it, what we hold on to, right? Because it's like... And we talked we talk last week in our live stream, I think, about in some ways the deceptiveness of our own hearts, right? That we're often holding on to these things that that our hearts are saying, you have to love this. Yes. You love this, right? Yes. And they're totally not the things that we're supposed to love, or no. at least at least not in that way. I mean, it's, co- it's cool to love going for walks, but I mean, you know, you can, can or loving exercise, but even that can become an idol and, yeah, a, and a barrier, right? right. Um, 
so it's yeah it's about the kind of love and it's about the way we the way that we hold on to them and and these things i mean i think the root of it all is they become these idols that we that yeah, we hold they up do. before other things yeah um, that's another plug for the silent fire youtube channel yeah hey, is yeah. the the bail series that we've been talking about yeah, the yeah, idols, yeah. right um that we still we still have a place where we serve idols today absolutely mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um one of one of the things I'm thinking about, just as you're sharing that, is um, uh, Abba Zosimus, mm-hmm. who's another desert father. He shares about uh, Moses the Ethiopian, and he basically says Moses. And by the way, um, welcome, welcome anybody. Yeah, yes. right. We're doing a live stream, so welcome. Thank you so much for joining in. Colin and I just kind of got caught up in talking about all these uh, early church father stuff, so we forgot to welcome you. Yeah. Um, so thanks for jumping on. Uh, if you can take a second and just share. The video to your Facebook wall that's super helpful for us yeah. uh, in terms of uh, getting this content out to people because we think it's really valuable and helpful for people to understand the sin of judgmentalness mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. which and we just made up a word too judgmentalness we did. it yeah. had the red underline on my MacBook yeah, so that's right yeah. so we made up the word that's yeah. good um, and it's kind of like um, uh, Hooperoki and no that's not the one I'm looking for uh, Homoousios or something oh yeah yeah right right, right. <laughs> you got to make up new words to <laughs> yeah, figure this stuff yeah. out uh, anyway um, thank you for jumping on let us know yeah. where you're from and if you have any questions about living the spiritual life um, or about what Colin and I are doing uh, things we've said things we've talked about in the past please post your questions yeah. we'd love to engage with I you. think I think these Fridays are not meant to be super rigid and formal we have a topic that we yeah, come to talk to right. but if anyone comments with a question or anything, we're happy to, yeah, happy to talk I, about the that. The idea is just to be with you guys for yeah. half an hour or so and talk about what, what the Lord's put on our hearts um, and what we're presently um, thinking about and working through. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like I was saying, Abba Zosimus, he was recounting some of the stories of Moses the Ethiopian. So he's just, just after Moses. And he tells the story about Moses when Moses walks into a meeting and he's ostracized by the fathers in the meeting because of the color of his skin. Right. Because Moses was from Ethiopia. He was a black man. So he's also known as Moses the Black. Mm-hmm. Also known as Moses the Robber because he was a notorious right. criminal before he became um, a lover of Jesus. Mm. Um, and a thief, robber. By Moses the Robber, they meant he was a leader of a wicked gang of thieves. Mm. And uh, his his backstory is pretty... <laughs> pretty. He actually premeditated for weeks and weeks and weeks just to get back on one guy who had slighted him. It was like right. the stories you hear about Moses. Wasn't there also a cool story? I think we talked about this in an earlier live stream, but where there was a bunch of robbers that like yes. set about to rob him. And then when they found out who they were robbing, they Well, he they overwhelmed just, all of them and that's, tied that's them up. Right, that's right. And then dragged they became them, monks yes, because they became, of it. Yeah. Yeah, he, tie, so. he drags them to the, to the church and yeah. throws them at the feet of the fathers. He's just become a, a, a right. father, right? No, he's not a father. He's still working on this. Yeah. And uh, throws them at the feet of the fathers in the monastery. And, and they go, Moses, what are you doing? And that's when they realize this is Moses, right. the Ethiopian. Moses, the robber. Yeah. <gasps> Terrified, they committed their life to Jesus. Wow. Um, so fear gets you in the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's David says, by <laughs> by fear, by usually it, the Psalm five, I think it is, mm. by lo- the loving kindness of God or the tenderness of God brings me into His house. Right. By fear, I will I worship and stay there. Right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's usually the other way around. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's <laughs> but with right. Moses, it was fear of Moses. <laughs> Whatever means necessary. Yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. means necessary. Yeah. I become all things to all men. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, Zosimus, he's telling the story mm. about how Moses walks into the meeting. The fathers of the meeting reject him because of the color of his skin, right. um, which is shows you that racism has it's not right. a new thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been something human beings have always struggled mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Ostracize. It's it's really ostracizing people that are different than you mm-hmm. and treating them as less than you. And so they did that with Moses. So Moses leaves the meeting perfectly justified in being angry, mm-hmm. right? Very justified in being angry. But Moses's language is, oh, oh, you wicked man. Right. Just by this anger, you prove how, how sick your heart is. Yeah. And so yeah. Zosimus taking that interaction says, rather than getting angry at the person, hmm. treat the person as the physician sent to you by the Lord to heal the anger in your soul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and then he goes on to talk about how when what we basically do is our possessions are like a worthless nail that we argue over. Right. Right. And he's saying, if anybody was to realize they were arguing over possessing a worthless nail, they would realize just how ridiculous their mm-hmm. argument was mm-hmm. and how ridiculous the thing they were holding on to was. Yeah. And that is the reality of what we hold on to. So really, the, the underpinning, um, mm. I was talking about this with one of my uh, podcasting friends 
the underpinning of the Desert Fathers and their approach to the spiritual life was attachments. Right. And what you're right. attached to, whether it's physical location, whether it's the people around you, whether it's the ideology you hold, whether it's the possessions you have, whether it's your carnality, your mm -hmm. appetite, all those things. The, the, the way that they practice the spiritual life was to detach yourself from those right. things in order to be attached to God. And, hence the desert. Hence desert the desert. Fathers. That too yeah. was part of it. I mean, Antony went to live in, uh, was it a fort? An abandoned yeah, an fort? an old abandoned and, fort. Yeah. And others in caves. And I mean, they just sort of relied to, I love, I think it was Antony where he survived mostly. People would like hurl bread over the wall. Yeah, they'd come to him yeah. to, to ask him questions and they'd bring him some some something to eat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he fasted like insanely yeah yeah and then i think I, I correct me if i'm wrong but i thought there was a story that even like some of them would go into these caves for a long time or anthony in the fort that locked themselves up in solitude for a long time but then come out looking like totally healthy and vibrant yeah and, and, and yeah. buff, right like and there and there's stories where you had there's one where there was a set of bro twin brothers and based on like one they both practice a spiritual life, but they had different routines mm. and fasting was definitely a part of it. Yeah. One had a healthy, vibrant body and one's body was more sickly. Right. So it wasn't necessarily that, that part and parcel to it is if you go lock yourself, mm -hmm. then you're mm -hmm. going to be this healthy, strong, vibrant no, no, body. No, it's not always the case, No. but it was definitely some of the, for some people it was the case mm -hmm. and some people it wasn't. And it wasn't a, an esteeming which one was better or not. It no. was, it was just saying, the effect on this person was this, the effect on this yeah, person neat, was this. Um, so anyway, this, this is, I love where our conversations go. <laughs> this, um, any, not at all what we were going to talk about. Um, but good. I yeah. love talking about the desert fathers. So, um, uh, Moses recognized that judging other people for how they treated him mm. was worthless. Right. It literally got you nowhere. Yeah. And that, and that's, see, we're told, and this is what I love about when you start understanding the stories in church history, I love, we're told not to be judgmental. Mm -hmm. And, and with and we know that scripture says, judge not, or you'll be judged right. in the manner, you know, Jesus says that in the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. we're not supposed to judge. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, as, as Paul says in first Corinthians two, we're supposed to weigh all things yeah. or discern all things or yeah. praise all things. You know, it's a different context. So, but we're not to judge, mm -hmm. but then you look at church history and how it, how it played itself out, gives you a lot of legs for what that looked like. Mm -hmm. Um, that, and you start to realize the whole, if you judge someone for how they've treated you mm -hmm. or what they've said about you, um, or how they've characterized you or mm -hmm. how they've labeled you, you have literally stunted your ability to grow. Right. Right. Because all you've done is externalized what should rather be a heart issue between you and God. Right, right. And if you externalize it, you make it about everything else around you in that particular context, you're probably doing it in more context than just that. Sure. To the Desert Fathers, and to, to not just the Desert Fathers, we're, now we're talking about, um, I could go 12th century, mm -hmm. um, The Ladder of Perfection by Walter Hilton. Okay. Um, he says, we ha in order to be perfectly humble, you have to learn to treat the, uh, and his, he uses, of course, Catholic lang language, the venial sins within yourself mm -hmm. as greater than the egregious sins in others. Now, venial right. would be the, the minor things. Right. Uh, the things that we would kind of just excuse. And sure, Defensiveness, sure. pride, things that are easy to ignore yeah. rather than uh, adultery is difficult to ignore. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, killing people and murder, mm -hmm. stealing from people, that's difficult to ignore. He's, he's saying, we have to learn to, deal with those minor things within us right. and be more serious about dealing with those than pointing out all the egregious sins in others. Yeah. And I, that's a fantastic point. So we're not just talking about early church and what they taught about the spiritual life. We're talking about church history mm -hmm. and how people who saw Jesus and pursued him and how they structured their life. Right. Yeah. 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 But what about like, you know, in, in, I just kind of want to say that's all easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, like I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, to, to kind of like to do what Moses, Abba Moses did and sort of turn your back, not to, not turn your back on, but I mean, to sort of look at, look at yourself and be like, no, 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 like this awful, my anger at this legitimately awful thing right. is really a me problem in a way. Yes. Right? I mean, it's a them problem yeah. too. I mean, they shouldn't be racist, but, um, you know, this is, this is a, a problem in right. my own heart. I can't change them. Right. Yeah. But you can change you. But I mean, I guess I'm thinking about to anyone who might be, to anyone who might be listening. Yeah. The like, practical side of it. That's yeah. Hard. What do we, how do we? Well, you don't do it in the moment. 
Right. It doesn't work that way. No, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. It, it, it works the, the, I had said this in, uh, in a previous video I did with Aaron, um, out of church, out of, out of our church. And I said, the spiritual life is one moment by moment by little mm. decisions that you mm. make. Right. It's not one in the big moments. It's right. one in the little moments yeah. and growth happens in those little moments. And, um, and so what, what I love about the practical reality of what Moses said mm -hmm. and, and the quote that you had, uh, that you read is just so beautiful yeah. is adopt this mentality and remind yourself of yeah. this. I've got a dead body I need to deal with. Yeah, I yeah. don't, I shouldn't be dealing with other people's dead bodies. Yeah. Deal with your yeah. own dead body first. And if that's, if you, if we begin to, the, the, the language of the desert fathers for something like that, um, is accuse yourself before you accuse other mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it starts first in, in one, well, first it starts in your heart becoming to more and more tender towards the heart of God. Right. That's the, that's the primary place it all starts. Mm -hmm. can't, it can't be anywhere without that. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's where you see Anthony the Great spending 20 years in the desert struggling against a demonic attachment or demonic, demonic attack and entanglement and um, temptation and all that stuff to get his heart into the heart mm -hmm. of the Father. Mm -hmm. um, and then leaving that place, it said that when he leaves the, that period of isolation that he was spirit born. Yeah, right. Um, as, in, as in the spirit carried him around everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, it doesn't start by the moment of testing, right? If you're trying to implement it in the moment of testing, you will fail mm -hmm, every time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle mm -hmm. and it starts in your heart, becoming tender to the heart of God and, and spending that, that daily rhythm, which we've talked about in For sure. previous live streams. Yep. Um, and, and in a lot of our first, the first silent fire um, episodes episodes we yeah. were talking all about that life of prayer that life of knowing yeah. god that mystery and the word that comes up kind of I, I think when i read moses's quote and we talk about this and think about this is that word like i always think of the word habit right like these things are yeah. meant to be like habituated into our souls and so when when moses says for example abba moses says um you know um you know do no harm to anyone do not think anything bad in your heart i think like you say he's not saying you know in the moment when someone comes up and like beats you up and robs you right you know yeah right. okay you might feel a little bit bad in your heart towards that person right as you're laying on the ground right but i think it is about this like gradual habituation in your life where it's like yes. later on you look back and you're like okay wait a minute maybe it's not good for my soul to hang on to this right i have to let that go and then gradually and i think this is what we what, what it's modeled for us in um you know, in the monastic life, yeah. uh, not only of the fathers, but yeah. as things uh, worked out through through the you know the right. middle part of the first millennia of the church, is that it's like things just become habituated, and they move they move into these like structured patterns of prayer every day because yeah, it's like right. we have we have to we have to we have to do this to 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 just instantiate this stuff in our right. hearts and in, in the rhythm of our our spiritual lives. Yeah, yeah, and it it's it is in that daily routine that that when. When I sit down to prayer, mm -hmm. the, the, the way that the, the fathers talked about it, the desert fathers talked about it, is uh, juxtaposing the remembrance of God with the remembrance of offense. Right. So when you mm -hmm. sit down to pray, yeah. if you dwell on offenses, if you remember offenses, you will choke out the life of God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, the, the caution, that, or the, the counsel then, not the caution, the counsel is in order to remember God, don't dwell on offenses. In order to deal with offenses, think about your own heart. Right. So rather than dwelling on what they've done or how you've been hurt mm -hmm. um, or old lingering hurts or wounds or anything, sure. in order to be in the presence of God, go, actually, no, I need Jesus and I'm going to consider my own heart before him mm. and that my own heart, I've done things and I need healing and I need to, and I need to mm -hmm. release anger and I need to release um, mm -hmm. judgment and all of, these, all of these things that I'm holding on to. So it, it, they juxtaposed those things and said, that's why mo what Moses is saying is, is not just a state of being to try and adopt. Right. It's a means to remember God consistently. Right, right, right. And um, I think it's either Ephraim, uh, the Syrian, or Evagris, uh, Pontus, who we've talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, I always want to say Ponticus, but it's not Ponticus. He, he's called Evagris Ponticus. Too. It is Ponticus, too. Okay. Well, Pon I think it's Evagris of Pontus or Evagrius Ponticus. Oh, okay, right. Maybe know. Ponticus means I hear both. Pontus. Yeah. I think so. Evagrius the solitary. We'll just say that, okay? That's another um, one for me. Yeah, that one, <laughs> that one works too. Um, I just say Andrew Freeman. Um, uh, hey, Andrew, it's been a long, to long time since I've seen you. He just said, good word, Josh. Nice. Um, so that's very nice. Thanks, Andrew. Nice, um, uh, so now Andrew distracted me. So what were we saying? Uh, <laughs> oh, Evagrius. Evagrius. Um, 
if you, if you, because one of the counsels of the Desert Fathers that the spiritual life should be full of tears, mm. yeah, and not just tears of um, of grief or anything, of but t- but the presence of God should drive you to tears. Mm. And one of the, I think it's a it's a vagaris or Ephraim. I'm pretty sure it's one of the two. It could be Isaiah. It's one of the it's one of the three. It, it's in the Desert Fathers. <laughs> sure, I believe you. Um, he says, if you want to have tears, just consider the fact that you are invited to dwell in the presence of God, and yeah. you don't. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, en- that's enough. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah. Yes. What? Consider your distance from God. Yeah. And um, and it will convict you. Hmm. And the cl- and you know you know like I'm sure you know that the closer you draw to God mm-hmm. in your life, you're you are a priest now. Mm-hmm. You are probably if people were to look at your life, they would say you are closer to God now than you were at the age of 19. Yes. But you probably wouldn't say that about yourself. Right. You would say, yeah, I can recognize that. Yes, I am. Because my character has been formed more. My integrity has been formed more. um, And I know more about him. Mm -hmm. But I also recognize I have so much more to go. Of course. At this point than I did when I was 19 years old. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the closer I draw to him, the inverse relationship is the closer I draw to him, the more I recognize my distance. Right. Which the more I recognize my distance, the more I'm driven by tears. One, of grief for my sin that's distanced me from him. And two, by the compassion he has to me to continue to invite me to him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which drives my desire to draw Which near to him. Which drives my desire yeah. to draw near to him. And yeah. and the problem with, and why, and why we can talk about the sin of judgmentalness mm. is because judgmentalness, judging other people for their actions, especially as they've pertained to how they've hurt you and offended mm-hmm. you, will hinder God's movement in your life because it will keep you dwelling on past offenses right. rather than on the presence of God. Right. And that's right. the teachings of the Desert Fathers. Yeah. That's in, in you yeah. know, in that particular in that particular framework, but Mm -hmm. that's what Moses is talking about. So he's giving language and understanding for people to say, Oh, if I just start thinking, no, I have a dead body in my house. I need to deal with, right. You'll probably get your mind off of others and on the stuff that you need to deal with. Um, and, and that's, and I, so it's so practical. Uh, Oh, and I was just, I remember it just as we were talking beforehand, um, I was telling you about another story from Moses uh, where Moses is called in to a council Mm -hmm. um, over a brother who has sinned in one of the communities. And uh, they're all these, these fathers are going to sit in judgment against the sin of the brother and try and figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And they ask Moses to be part of this. Um, And Moses is quite, I mean, at this point, Moses struggled with, um, lustful dreams for a long time. Okay. He had a, a real significant struggle with lustful dreams. So much so that um, one, of the, one of the fathers, I can't remember which one it was, uh, counseled Moses and said, you need to stop being so rigid in the spiritual life. You're going to kill yourself. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he was trying to deal with the demon of lust. Mm-hmm. And, and he was doing it through rigid ascetical practices. And he's right. saying, let up. I'll pray for you. It's all going to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, and because you don't deal with those things, you deal with those things through discipline, but it ha- it requires faith. Right. Um, anyway, so he knew he knew he was very well acquainted with his own sinfulness. Mm. So he he's invited into this council to judge this brother and the sin that um, this brother's entered into, mm. and uh, he shows up with a an old basket with holes in it full of sand, mm-hmm. and the trail of sand is behind him. Right. right? And the fathers go, what are you doing? And he says, my sins are numerous behind me and I don't even see them, mm. but I'm coming here to judge the sins of my brother. Yeah. And they go, and it says, and they didn't say anything. <laughs> they just forgave the brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that's the whole point is yeah. um, the God's heart is, and this is, it's just a reflection of this. It's slow to anger. Mm-hmm. It's quick to mercy. Mm-hmm. We're the opposite. Yeah, right. How do right. we implement a slow to anger and a quick to mercy mm-hmm. heart? And part of it is recognize that you're the first person that needs help. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, um, we've just hit, just about hit the 30 Have we? Okay. minute mark. And that was quick. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, it went, and when it went. So um, any, any final thoughts, Colin, dwelling in that brain of yours? No, not on this one. Actually, <laughs> it's not to say there's not thoughts sure. sometimes, but right now, no. I think we've said said what needed to lots be said. Of, lots of ponder. Yeah, yeah. And for I can sure. all, I mean, all of us can think of 
moments or things people have said labels i remember i mean i remember labels put on me when i was young of right you know you're only adequate or average at everything that you do right right and we adopt those labels of course and of course if i blame other people or get angry at other people for those labels i've given that label far more power than absolutely it actually absolutely should yeah and rather than forgiving them and becoming all that god has mm -hmm. created me to be so mm -hmm. here here this would be my parting thought then mm. which is i'm thinking is rather in the in the moment of hurt in the moment of offense when you're when you're trying to get before the father and all you can think about is how people have hurt you hurt you mm. ask the father what he thinks about you mm. and dial in and center on that father what do you think about me today what do you say about me today and cuz finding a, a an approximation at least of what the father thinks about you will help you see other people from that perspective right. yeah father what do you think about me today mm. Just, just dial into him and deal with your own stuff and let God deal, let God be God. Let him deal with yeah. the hearts and the sins of others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not your responsibility. No. Right. No. I used to say when people would tell me, but friends of mine would tell me, you know, Josh, the Holy Spirit convicts me of sin. Mm. And I would say, and I am his instrument. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 uh, so it's not your responsibility to yeah. convict other people of sin yeah it's your responsibility to walk with people and love them and when you have an established relationship you can have a conversation with something on some someone in a helpful way to help them walk through things mm -hmm. um, amen i think that's the, the standard we need to hold up amen yep. yeah amen well, everybody, I guess yeah, until next time, it has been Until next Friday. Yeah. We'll see you Monday evening. Yeah, that's right. Um, Monday night, 8.30 p.m. 8 oh, I'll, I will say this. If you're watching now or later, right. um, we have a course upcoming that um, we're going to run through. If you, if you, you'll see stuff about it. There's a live video from uh, yesterday on the Wind Ministries Facebook page about a, a seminar we're doing all throughout August, August 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th, the four, four Fridays in August. Um, and it's called Forming the Heart, and it's all about working through these issues. What are mm. the things that hinder you in your growth in God, and how do you structure your life to grow in Him? Um, and, uh, and so we're doing that online, and we're doing that in person. So if you're in Atlantic Canada, um, you may be able to attend that. Um, if you are anywhere else in the world, uh, you can attend it via, we're going to have a Zoom version of that as well. So it's going to be live and online at the same time simultaneously. So that'll be 7 p.m. Uh, Atlantic Standard Time, uh, Fridays throughout August. Mm -hmm. So check out windministries.ca, the events page for that. And uh, just look at the Wind Ministries Facebook page too, and you can find some stuff for that as cool. well. So we'd love to see you there. Yeah, okay. awesome. Until next time. Yeah, All we'll right. see you then. We'll see you then.